We continue the American story with the award-winning director Lee Daniels, who's known for films like The Butler and the Oscar-winning Precious. His latest offering, The United States vs. Billie Holiday, depicts how the jazz legend ended up on the wrong side of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. It was all down to her song Strange Fruit, a potent protest against lynching. The Bureau exploited Holiday's own drug addiction to try and silence her. Here's Daniel speaking to our Michelle Martin about that incredible story and his own struggles with addiction. Thanks, Christian. Lee Daniels, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for having me. So, you know, in a new show, when we're trying to figure out who we want to talk to on a news event, we would say, why this person on this topic at this time? So I wanted to ask you this about this, this film. Why did you want to tell this story at this time? I do films that are in my spirit, you know, uh, whatever is in the air. And um, racism is, is interesting because you, unless, you, unless they don't have to call you a to, to, you can smell it in the air. Systemic racism is real. It's an aerosol and you can't, sometimes you can't touch it. And I felt that there was some, there was something going on. There was this darkness that was in the in the in the in the air, and that when the unmentionable got elected, and 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 I knew that something was going on. I felt it. So I was drawn to this material that Susan Laurie Parks wrote, uh, based on this book that uh, Johann Hamry uh, wrote, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, and it was the first time that I understood what strange fruit meant. I was attracted to this script because uh, it was a call to arms. And it was mm -hmm. something that I thought in my spirit I had to do because it was in the air. You know, it's interesting because I, I think a lot of people know that Billie Holiday was one of the great singers of all time, one of the great, certainly one of the great jazz singers. I think people may know that she struggled with addiction, but I don't know that a lot of people know of the government's role in pursuing her. And in making her such a focus of this intense, uh, just obsession in in a, in a way, with, at least with some of the sort of bureaucrats. Would you just give us a little synopsis of, of the story that you're telling in this film? It picks up with Billy first wanting to sing the song of Strange Fruit and the government not allowing her to sing that song and her manager and her, and her then husband trying to convince her to not sing it. And so we see this defiant woman wanting to sing a song that um, we try to figure, well, what is the song? Strange Fruit, what is the song? So, um, and then we find out that the government is, um, they don't want her to sing the song. The song is, uh, it kicks off the civil rights movement as we know it. It's, it's, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a call to arms. So for people who are not aware, who have perhaps never heard it, what is Strange Fruit about? Strange Fruit is about the lynching of Black people. It's a song about the lynching of us. Southern trees, they're strange fruit. Blood on the leaves and blood at the root. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze. Strange fruit hanging from the poplar trees. Billy was an international, um, global superstar. I think the equivalent to Beyonce, you know, around the world. and. They didn't want her to sing the song. She refused to stop singing the song. So they couldn't hire white agents to infiltrate Harlem. So they hired uh, black agents to infiltrate Harlem to take her down, to stop singing the song. Mm. And she went to jail. And, uh, and it's really the, 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 for what her life, ha what happens to her life uh, post singing the song to the end and how, how the government dogged her unto her deathbed and how they, we even questioned whether they were responsible for her death, mm -hmm. planting drugs on her, anything they could to uh, stop her from singing the song, paying off her boyfriends, the song, 
could not be sung. Hoover did not want that song sung. I cut strange fruit. No, Joe, I want to sing the damn song, all right? The club advertises it. People pay good money to come here and hear me sing it. I've told you a hundred times, people in high places don't want you singing that song. And I've asked you over a hundred times, what people, Joe? What you looking at him for? I'm the one pays you. The government. Yeah, the government. People like your buddy Anzinger, right? Quit it with that, huh? The song means a lot to me, Joe. Miracle wrote and he's f***ing commie. All right, come on. I don't care, all right? It's important to me. You ain't singing that song. I sing the f I want. I think, you know, it was blacklisted from the radio. It just, what is it you think was so frightening? Well, I didn't know what, how frightening it was. And then I even heard it throughout the years. I didn't really understand the significance of it until I read the script. Black bodies swinging in the southern breeze, strange fruit hanging from a poplar tree. It is, uh, it's the ugliest thing I have heard. Uh, you know, the, the ugliest poem that, uh, that I've ever read. And, and it's pungent and powerful and disturbing. It ain't pretty. Mm. Uh, and yet she made it. I, I don't know what she made it, but she made it so that we couldn't take our eyes off of her, Billy. And uh, I was really happy that Andrew was able to, through God, really work miracles and, and, and re reenacting that. Is it true that you didn't really want her for the role at first? I think I read that, that you didn't want her. Is that true? Yeah. And why, why not? It's a hard role. She's in every scene, every scene practically. And she carries the film. Uh, and so I really wanted to work with an actor, someone that had worked before, and I couldn't take that chance. And, uh, and I loved her voice. I knew that she could understand what it was like you know, as a, as a vocalist. Uh, and I had gotten some, I was down to the wire with a couple of incredibly known actors that would have been able to pull it off, but they were acting. Mm -hmm. Difference, you know, there's a difference. She transcended. It was a spiritual awakening for me, watching her, her, her audition. Uh, and so I met with her. I begrudgingly met with her and she, I think with the first thing that I what I realized, oh my God, this this woman is maybe right for this role, is because she was nervous herself. She had such respect for Billie Holiday that she didn't know that she could do her justice. And I'd never seen anybody talk themselves out of an audition. I've been around many. I said, this is a good stunt. This girl is really a, she's she's a really good actress. I've been knows. But she really was talking to herself, I said, you know, I don't know whether I can do this. And I said, well, let me put you with an acting coach. Let me put you a vocal coach. And I used, the, I used my acting coach and my vocal coach and I put them together. And the acting coach sent me a, uh, a video of her getting into character. And her posture has changing. There was a dead in her eye. Her vocal had changed. I don't know, uh, it, I don't know what happened. And uh, it was God speaking to me. I knew that it was God speaking to me. And so, and then I think the day after that, I saw her at the Academy Awards where she shut the shut it down singing. And I knew that this was the girl to 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 play this character. I feel like your film is also generous toward Jimmy Fletcher, who, as you described, was the uh, a real a real person, a federal yeah. agent who was you know, the, the head of this team that went to infiltrate the, you know, the Harlem scene, as it were, to be sort of, he was supposed to be the agent of her downfall. We have a clip with Jimmy and Anslinger, who's the government official who's sort of determined to take um, Billie Holiday down. Pardon me for asking, but why is that song so important to us? Hoover says it's un-American. You've heard those lyrics. They provoke people in the wrong way. The wrong way. What would you have me do, sir? You're a good liar. 
Now I need you to go down to the person and tell her you're sorry. She'll believe you. <laughs> She's a sucker for men. A lot of black people are put in that position. My mm -hmm. dad was. My dad was a cop at the at the height of the move movement in Philadelphia. And mm -hmm. I remember him coming home crying. Mm -hmm. And it was and I, you know, I was terrified of my father. He was abusive. But I remember feeling so sad for him. I'd never mm -hmm. seen him cry before, ever seen him cry before. So I think that there are lots of Jimmy Fletchers that are out there, lots of us that are doing it out there. And I think that there again is a grayness to to Jimmy. And um, that was the hardest role because it was like walking a tightrope. It was the hardest role to direct because he, I mean, he took her down. And so, and then, so why is he showing up? And how are we, why are we even liking this guy? Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but we see that he was wrong. We see that he knows that he's, that he is being used. I wonder if, in addition to being a character himself and being uh, having been a real person who played a real role in the story, is there a bigger metaphor here about the dilemma that some Black people are confronting? Oh, come on now. You know, Michelle, what the bigger metaphor. I mean, come on. We are living it daily. We see it daily. You know, some of these cops that we're, that are out here doing what they're doing, it's horrible. You know, I was doing, I'm thinking about doing a procedural and uh, but what is a cop show right now? Uh, what is a cop show right now? The idea of are, are they the good guys or the bad guys? And the stories that I'm hearing from black cops right now, I don't want to tell those stories. Mm. I do not want to tell those stories. Why not? It's too sad. Mm. Too sad. We got some unhappy black men out here that are serving, serving our country serving our serving our country in you know as cops one of the things that that always strikes me about your films is the contrast between the beautiful and the terrible i mean on the one hand a lot of your women characters are very strong and have their own their own sense of being and yet they are not immune from being brutalized and yet i don't know that duality seems to interest you i want to hear more about that the duality of it, both the beautiful and the terrible. Because we are, we really are. We're, we're not one, I don't think. I think that, you know, for as tough as I am, I'm really, really weak. You know, I'm, um, I don't, I, 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 I'm tough and I'm weak. And, uh, and I'm good and I'm bad. And I, and I wake up every morning and I try to become a, I, I do something, I wanna become a, I wanna be a good example for my kids, but I follow my ass. And uh, so I, I look at the imperfections in everyone and, and to try to find the perfection in the imperfection in all of us. And I think in, in particular, in, in, my, in my story, in black cinema, I just, I think that uh, we are, uh, oftentimes it's not, uh, hmm, we're the hero and, uh, and that's that, or we're the bad guy and that's that. But we don't live in that gray area. And I like to live in that. I like to sit, settle in that gray area. And that gray area is very disturbing to many people. You get things out of people, people say, they're not sure other directors could get. And why, why do they trust you so much to go to such, to go to these difficult places? Because you're asking them to take on and to channel a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they trust you to do that with them? I think because I am so raw and honest, Michelle, in my day-to-day -day with them that I talk about my insecurities. I talk about my, I don't, my inability as a director to find the scene that I'm scared of. Uh, help me find the scene. Uh, uh, and they see my fragility and my uh, vulnerability. And that makes them vulnerable too. They know everything about me. There's no secrets. I have no secrets when I'm working with an actor. My life is an open book. And when they are, they're relaxed and they're open to receive, I yell action and they're in it and they don't even know what happened. <laughs> I don't even know what happened, but we have found it because we are, are we are, 
pure. We're honest with each other in the moment. Mm -hmm. So everything you see is 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 uh, real, very real. Well, speaking of being very open, you've been very open about your own struggles around addiction in in the past. I know you you talked to me about it in in the past, and I understand that subsequently you've even given up drinking. That you're you're sober. You're completely sober now. And I wondered, did those experiences find their way into the character? your experience with addiction because you have been highly productive the entire time you were going through all this as she was and i just wondered did did that experience find its way into the story yeah i mean how can you be successful i don't know how i did it mm. you know i'm trying to heal myself i was trying the only way i knew how and i think the only way billy knew how and that was to anesthetize yourself from the pain of your childhood of the darkness that you've encountered you're just trying to heal. You're trying to live. Mm -hmm. And so when you yank that away, that uh, blanket away, that cover that makes you feel good, uh, it's terrifying. So it's a dangerous thing for me to do this film um, sober. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's good, to be honest with you. I hope it's mm -hmm. good. I don't know whether it's good. I can't, <laughs> I'm never going to go back and look at it. But I, uh, I'm not as confident about it as I am mm -hmm. Hmm, really? Why? Because I'm not, I'm not boozed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you're boozed, any, everything's good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not as confident as I am when I am, when I'm using. What allowed you to finally release that? What allowed you to finally let that go? The booze and the drugs? Because um, it sounds like you really kind of stepped out on the plank and jumped. What, what made you, what allowed you to do that? Um, what allowed me to do that? was i just think it was time mm. it was just time it was time i'm 60. uh i've been um drinking for all of my life and mm. uh, four years ago i decided as we began on this journey with billy to stop completely mm. to live mm. in my truth because i knew that i had to tell this story i knew that I, for me to honor her i had to tell it sober I may not make sense to you. Mm. It may not make sense to you, but it makes sense to me. I could not honor this act mm. Hi, Lee Daniels, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Michelle, thank you so much for having me. I look forward to coming back again and again. <laughs>